Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya and our gracious host, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government of the IGAD Member States and Head of Delegation of Yemen, Excellency Chairperson of the African Union Commission, these distinguished heads and representatives of regional and international organizations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by extending my heartfelt thanks to the Brazilian people and government of the Republic of Kenya for the warm welcome and hospitality accorded to all of us since our arrival. I'd also like to commend President Uhuru Kenyatta and all the heads of state and government, as well as heads of delegation of the IGAD member states and that of Yemen for taking the initiative to attend this special summit on durable solutions and effective reintegration of Somali refugees, the first of its kind to address this issue. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the European Union and its member states as today is the 60th anniversary of the Treaty of Rome, which was the founding act of what has now become the European Union. As a true partners, we join Europe in its celebration and welcome the deep relationship and partnership of the European Union with the countries and peoples of IGAD. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this special summit of IGAD assembly is taking place at a moment that's both opportune and challenging. Opportune because Somalia has carried out successful national election electing its president, Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo, who has clear vision and national development plan, offering the prospect for real progress in government and for the solutions to address the problems of refugees and displaced persons. Challenging because our region is currently in the deep, in the grip of a severe drought affecting the livelihood of millions of people and has loss of livestock, which is the main assets of the people in a drought-affected areas, a crisis that will inevitably make our efforts in finding lasting solutions to these problems even more cumbersome. This meeting could hardly be more timely to enable us all to exchange views and produce practical and lasting solutions to address the plight of Somali refugees. This is also a global problem calling for collective resolve and action. It is against this background that we need to adopt and put in place coordinated practical measures at regional and global levels. In this context, I would like to emphasize three points. First, we must continue to provide emergency life-saving assistance to all refugees irrespective of their country of origin. This requires countries to continue opening up their borders to persons fleeing for protection and seeking humanitarian assistance. Certainly, Ethiopia remains committed to keeping its door open to all seeking international protection. We would encourage others to continue to do the same. Secondly, Countries that host large refugee numbers and shoulder their responsibility on behalf of the international community need enhanced international support and solidarity to reduce the burden on overstretched systems and resources. This means designing and implementing mechanisms to allow for sharing of responsibilities through expanding resettlement opportunities and other mobility schemes in countries that are in a position to do so. While I recommend countries that continue to offer resettlement opportunities, I would like to encourage others to offer similar opportunities. Pending the search for durable solutions, I would also like to encourage development partners and financial institutions to support the reliance of countries, the resilience of countries, and communities hosting large number of refugees. I believe strengthening resilience capacity in refugee hosting countries would enable them to respond more comprehensively to the pressing needs of refugees. 
Thirdly, I would like to encourage development partners and relevant financial institutions to enhance their support to countries coming out of conflict and to facilitate conditions for voluntary repatriation and reintegration of refugees into their countries. Equally, the country of origin must commit to concrete measures for stability and finding political solution to address the needs of both displaced persons and refugees. Following its election, Somalia is now certainly moving forward in terms of political transformation and creating peace and stability. We must ensure that its current achievements are sustained and continue unimpeded. This is where we need a demonstration of political will and commitment by the government of Somalia and indeed by the rest of us for a durable solution that will allow for effective reintegration of Somali refugees in their homeland. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would add that securing sustainable solutions for Somali refugees and displaced persons and their effective integration must, of course, be locally driven, part participatory, and all-inclusive. Community-based approaches will create an environment allowing those most affected by the crisis to have their voices heard. This will not only facilitate the participation of refugees and displaced persons in designing solutions, but will link humanitarian assistance with development. I would therefore like to make the following suggestions to encourage durable solutions for Somali refugees and displaced persons and provide for their effective reintegration. In the first place, all relevant actors must display the necessary political will and commitment at national, regional, and global levels. Secondly, we must enhance and strengthen the capacity of the Somali National Security Forces and AMISOM to win the fight against Al-Shabaab, as this remains a major security concern and impedes our efforts for the resolution of displacement and migration. We must extend our support to the people and government of Somalia to enable them to strengthen their political and democratic institutions. We must also provide the necessary technical, financial, and logistical support for reconstruction and development in Somalia so that the government can provide basic services and improve livelihoods. We must place refugees and displaced persons at the center of these efforts to promote peace, stability, state building, and development in Somalia. We cannot expect from the new Somali government without enough support with the resources. In this context, the international community must continue its engagement with us, but in a more serious and constructive dialogue to create a coherent, sustainable, and resilient process. And finally, I would suggest that all relevant regional and global initiatives for Somalia be brought under a single framework to ensure a coherent and functional response mechanisms led by the Somali government. All this said, I, I would, I believe, enable an effective structure for our collective efforts to address sustainable and lasting solutions to, to the crisis in Somalia. I look forward to hearing further concrete suggestions. I thank you for your kind attention.